Scientists are great at predicting solar eclipses. For instance, how long have we known the date and time of the eclipse on April 8th? It's been decades. And we know when the next total solar eclipse will happen in Canada. The next total solar eclipse for Canada will be August 23rd, 2044, when it will pass over parts of Western Canada. And we even know the next time Niagara will experience this event again. It'll be October 26th, 2144, before the next path of totality passes over. Them. So we can predict something 120 years in advance to the minute in space. But when it comes to our own atmosphere, we have difficulty predicting cloud cover on eclipse day, even a few days in advance. Why can we do one and not the other? For forecasting an eclipse, uh, there's really only three objects we need to worry about. It's the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon, with a little bit of influence from other planets, but not that much. In our atmosphere, we're dealing with uh, the number of molecules is like 10 to the 44th power. So that's a one with 44 zeros after it. Or it's a 100 tredecillion molecules. And that just makes the math so much more complicated. Like even forecasting a couple of weeks out starts getting into difficulty, let alone 120 years forward. Whereas it would be very easy for us to tell when the next eclipses are coming, we're, we're never gonna get the weather that accurately. But Scott leaves us with some optimism when it comes to eclipse day. If it says mix of sun and cloud or mainly cloudy, there might be enough breaks in there we can still see the eclipse. Or even if it's overcast with cirrus high up in the sky, there may, that may be enough that we can see the eclipse right through the clouds and still get a great show out of it.